memory rising, let me show you a technique to find that leak. Okay, so what exactly is UMDH? UMDH, or User Mode Dump Heap, is a free tool distributed by Microsoft to capture statistics on memory allocation for native applications. I am going to be using the version of UMDH that is distributed in WinDebug. So go to WinDebug, go to the directory in WinDebug and find for the UMDH executable. The UMDH executable that you want to be using must have the same bit type as the application you're intending to debug. So if I'm using a 32-bit program, use UMDH from the 32-bit folder. Put the directory in the path variable so that it'd be much easier to type commands for UMDH. What can this tool do? Well, if you're writing an application in C or C++ and you use malloc new or any other API that allocates memory in on the heap, then you can use UMDH to capture statistics and potentially use UMDH to find any memory leaks. If your program is written in .NET, then UMDH is not exactly going to work. You want to be using a .NET specific way of figuring out if memory is being hogged by an object in the garbage collector. The dump heap command of WinDebug is very effective at finding out if objects are being held in memory for .NET. I have a video in this playlist that shows how to use the dump heap command. I recommend using dump heap instead of UMDH if your program is written as a C sharp program or any other .NET managed language. Now, even though UMDH can be used, it's really tedious to use UMDH to find memory leaks. Objects in native applications often are complex enough that even though you use UMDH, it's very hard to interpret the results. There are a few commercial applications that are available that do a much better job than UMDH, but UMDH is free, and if it's free, you gotta check it out. Anyway, UMDH can capture memory over a long period of time, so I would recommend learning UMDH even if you don't intend on using it, just to know the mechanics of how it can be done. Okay, let's get started. Let me switch to my remote machine over here. So I have a program that I wrote that would intentionally leak memory when I press enter. So let me just run my program. I will put the um, source code to this program on GitHub so that you can take a look at it. Nothing special about this source code. The program just leaks memory every time I press enter. This is what I'll use to track when I run UMDH. Now, in order to run UMDH properly, we need to enable two things. The first is we need to enable user mode stack tracing. And the second is we need to put the path to the Microsoft Symbol server. So to enable user mode stack tracing, we can use gflex to turn on the user mode stack tracing, which is the UST command. All right, so to run the command, uh, what we can do is uh, we can either start gflex or we can just run on the command line, the command gflex slash i memleak1. This is the name of the module. Slash i means image. So this is the name of the module, the executable plus UST. Plus UST is to say enable user mode stack tracing. You want this enabled because this is what UMDH is going to use to be able to track the stack when it finds a memory leak. So if I press enter over here, what will happen is Windows will say that there's going to be elevation. It's because what GFlex is doing is that it is actually setting this option in the Windows registry. I'll put a description uh, I'll put in the description some instructions of where it sets these options. But what we want to do is we want to press yes over here. And that will enable the gflex option for plus USD for memleak1. Now that I've set that option, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just restart uh, my application. Uh, that's because the commands for the plus USD only takes into account when the program starts. So I'm going to run the uh, program again. And what's going to happen now is Windows is going to track the user mode stack tracing. It's going to store that 
and UMDH now can read that information when I run UMDH. The next option you want to set is the environment variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press start. You just type environment variables and you want to set this environment variable over here called anti symbol path. I'll put some instructions in the description below on what exactly is anti symbol path. But you need to put anti symbol path because this is the path where UMDH is going to download symbols from. In WinDebug, we can type the command symfix in WinDebug. But in the case of UMDH, we can't actually tell it where to get symbols from. So we have to use this environment variable. So set it up before you run UMDH so that it can actually download the symbols from the Microsoft symbol server. Now that we have configured our system to have plus USD and we have configured the anti symbol part, we are ready to run UMDH. So UMDH has two modes. The first mode is that it can capture memory allocations and write it to a file on disk. The second mode is that it can take two or more files from disk, compare them and show the delta. The technique to use UMDH is that you have to run UMDH one time before the point of the memory leak. That will be your base measurement. After you've done that, run your program or do whatever you want until you suspect that there is a memory leak. At that point, you want to run UMDH again to capture the memory at that point. Do that a certain number of times and you will have a lot of log files of allocations. At a certain point where you believe that the memory should have been cleaned up, run UMDH after that to capture the final state and then you can delta all the states and see the difference of allocation. That's how you know a memory leak has occurred. So let's do that. So the first thing we want to do is we have the screen over here. I'm just going to move it to the side so that we can see it a bit more clearly. So what I want to do is I want to run the command tlist. And what I'm doing with tlist is I'm looking for the process ID of the program I want to track. UMDH has to have the process ID, the PID, so that it can write the allocations back. So the process ID is 21072 for this process. So how I use UMDH, just going to move the screen a bit. I'm going to just capture this a bit. Like that. Let's make it a bit easier for myself. So what I'm going to do is, you're going to run UMDH minus p this is the uh, process id then you're going to go minus f and this is going to be the file that you want to write the allocation in i'm just going to call it base.txt so when i run this command umdh is going to write to disk a file called base.txt which contains the memory allocations that have occurred for the process at this point now if i go to the uh, folder i see a base.txt over here if I open the file, it's a text file. It's going to show all the uh, allocations inside. We don't need to look at it at this moment. Uh, we'll use UMDH to delta it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to force a memory leak, run UMDH again, and then I can delta and show you the results. So switch back to my program. So what I did with my program is that if I press enter over here, it's going to leak memory. It's going to leak a certain number of bytes, but it's enough for UMDH to capture it. Now that it has leaked, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to UMDH, but instead of writing base, I'm just going to call it leak1.txt. So now UMDH is going to write the same allocations that it did for base, but it's after the point of the leak. If I delta these two, I should get the memory leak. Now that we have two files, in order to get the memory leak, what we can do is we can run UMDH, give it the name of the first file, base.txt, then give it the name of the second file, which is leak.txt, and pipe the results into a file. I'm just going to call it results.txt. Now, this command can be very fast, like in my case, or it can be very slow as symbols get downloaded. Just be patient that this is happening. If you find that it is excessively slow, don't put the don't pipe to results.txt, just watch it on the command line and you can see that it is struggling to download symbols. Now, when you have set up the Microsoft Symbol Server, 
Remember to put a semicolon and put any other path to any other symbol that is needed. Because I am running UMDH in the same identical directory as my executable, my PDB file is also there. So let me show you what I mean. If I have memleak1.exe and the PDB next to it, it's going to pick it up automatically because the algorithm that matches the symbols always gives priority to symbols that are in the same directory. So if you run any executable and run UMDH from the same folder, just put the PDB in the same location and it does not need to be on the symbol path. But if you have a lot of symbols, definitely put it on the anti symbol path so that UMDH can find all the symbols. Now in this directory, I will have result.txt. If I open that text file, this file will contain all the allocations that UMDH found to be a leak. Now let's take a look at the log file itself. So the top of the file, it's just going to show where the symbols came from. So it says that memleak1 symbol came from here, which is the local directory. The anti-dll symbols came from my sim cache. This is because I ran this command many, many times and it downloaded all the symbols. The first time you run it, you might get more debugging lines over here saying that it is downloading the symbols. Now each log entry is listed down here with a peculiar syntax over here. Don't really worry too much. What you're looking for is you have the number of bytes over here and you have the increase of bytes over here. This settings over here tells you how much it went up. So the bytes delta says that it started out as zero bytes for this allocation and then it went up by 88. This is correct because I am allocating a certain amount of memory. So all you have to do is look out for this plus and this line over here and this tells you the allocation. Down here is the same as this except this is the number of times the allocation occurred. It basically when it shows the allocation, if it is in a loop, it does not actually display that allocation multiple times. It actually counts the loops and it just says the count is more than one. So you can use this to find where you have the memory leak. Now, knowing that we have a leak is not as important as finding out where. And this is why we ran the plus USD. If we run the plus USD, we actually get the stack. So on the top of the stack, we have the allocate heap. These are part of the uh, debugging of Windows. We, we don't need to care about that. And we have malloc over here. This is because I actually put malloc in my program. So malloc's over here. This is the important part. Memleak1, that's my program, has a function called leak. And at this location, the seventh line of this CPP file, that's where the leak occurred. Let's verify that. I have an instance of Visual Studio over here. And if I go to line seven of memleak1, yep, there it is. I allocated 100 bytes and I just did not, did not release this pointer. And thus, that is the leak that is being tracked by UMDH. Now, at this point, it's actually possible to capture a memory dump and look at the heap in the memory dump to look at what kind of object is being leaked. This line over here says uh, line 7 is a leak and this is the details of the leak. There's not much else other than the size. So if, if I were to leak out an array or a string, yeah, that's fine. The size is fine. But if you have something more sophisticated, you probably want to look at what that object is. This is where it gets difficult. You can use WinDebug to capture a memory dump and correlate this information with WinDebug because the addresses are actually written in here. I will do a video on that in the future because that's a bit more sophisticated using the heap command in WinDebug and tracing backwards. But UMDH and WinDebug both use the user stack trace. So it is definitely possible to use WinDebug and look at this object if you captured a full memory dump. I did not capture a full memory dump because when you use UMDH, it's just writing a simple text file. It is not a full memory dump. So I am unable to look inside this memory address to see what it is but I can see where it leaked. This most of the time it will suffice in trying to fix that memory leak. Now, realistically, even though UMDH worked, that example was extremely simple. In a real application with a lot of objects, com objects, handles, strings all over the place, 
you will get a very tedious and very complicated looking result.txt. This is the core reason why UMDH is not favored for large applications. The reason is it's too hard to figure out what the result.txt is trying to say. If an object has strings inside and the object leaks, UMDH may not even be able to recognize that these objects are actually nested. It may actually say that the leak occurred in multiple locations, even though that's not exactly true. This is just a limitation of the UMDH tool. However, it's still good knowledge to know that UMDH exists and you can use it in a pinch, especially for simpler programs or programs you just want to identify uh, that a leak is occurring. The strength of UMDH is that it is really, really light. When you run it, it writes a text file. Even if you have a process that is running for days, you can still write the text file periodically. If you are using WinDebug or any other sophisticated tool, writing a memory dump for memory increasing is difficult. Like in WinDebug, if your memory dump is a gigabyte or two gigabytes, it's very difficult to capture it consistently. Same with any other tool. So UMDH is the lightest way to find a memory leak. It doesn't always work and it's not simple to use. It can be very tedious. But in a pinch, it's probably something you can keep with you and you can try to use, even if it's not that good, because it might give you a clue on what a better tool to use in order to track that memory leak. The GFlex option that we used earlier, I'll put some details in the description below on where it configures the options. Uh, you will need to go to the Windows registry to remove the options or you can just run gflex slash i minus usd to remove the options. I prefer just to go to the registry key because you can just wipe out all options that you want and also learn about how image file execution works. So definitely have a read of the link in the description below. Have you used UMDH before? I actually have used UMDH before. When I was desperate to find a memory leak in a native application that was increasing over time, I just ran UMDH and I managed to prove that it was in a certain location. So UMDH really does work if you're in a pinch. But truthfully, I do not recommend using UMDH as your primary tool. Use it as a backup or a desperation tool. Your primary way of finding memory leak should be something built into the application to report that it is leaking. If you are unsuccessful in doing that, definitely go and try UMDH. Let me know in the comments below if you have used UMDH before. And a gentle reminder to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified for future videos. Give me a like if you like the content. That really helps the channel grow. It's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out. <laughs>